the whole thing started out as a charity ball at Claridge's Hotel in London uh, in aid of the Greater London Fund for the Blind. And uh, although she herself didn't attend the ball, a lot of her clients obviously did. And many of them came to her either before the event or after it to get photographs taken of themselves in their beautiful, very expensive and very lavish gowns. And that gave her the idea, sowed a seed in her mind, to produce a whole series of images of society ladies in classical costume, which was the theme of the ball, had an Olympian theme. Then she set about uh, designing costumes. Poses were rehearsed, uh, backgrounds were designed, props were either bought or hired, and the whole thing stage managed by herself with, with such panache. Uh, it was used to mark the opening of her new studio in Berkeley Square and was a runaway success, not only with the sitters themselves, but also with the public at large. And I think from then onwards, uh, really, I think that was her highlight. Uh, it was a, a really quite astonishing display. She was uh, the daughter of a king, obviously, and, and, and great beauty in her time. And Zeus, who had a bit of an eye to the for the ladies, to say the very least of it, uh, took a uh, shine to her and just guised himself as a very, very handsome young white bull. There is something very appealing about uh, the way she is uh, presented with her arm round this bull. And just her, her features generally are very soft and very gentle. Certainly she would be my, my first choice of wife uh, if, I, if I ever had that sort of choice. The image she made of Persephone, I, I find extremely interesting. The dye transfer print of that is very, very beautiful. You've got this head with a beautiful wreath of uh, pastel shaded flowers round her hair um, with heavy uh, lipstick in what was obviously a, a bottle green velvet dress. Back lift. So you've got the hair, light coming through the hair. Uh, and this disembodied hair, head and hand, uh, it really is a stunningly beautiful image. I, I could live with her too. This lady was representing the muse of history. In real life, she was the wife of Anton Eden, who was the foreign secretary for many years during the 30s and through the war as well. And uh, the image is a striking one, above all, for this very strong blue colouring. Uh, she achieved this effect by placing very thin blue cellophane over the lens and the lights to achieve this effect. And the whole effect you get is a very otherworldly one. Uh, to the extent that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to tell the difference between the living creature and the marble statue in the background whose space she's sharing. The next one, again, a very, very striking image, and really the only one of the whole series that I would not like to have on my bedroom wall because the eyes are so piercing. This is the Medusa. The Medusa was one of uh, three Gorgons, three sisters, who had uh, somehow got involved with the god Poseidon in a rather illicit way and had um, been changed into, uh, into Gorgons, winged creatures with snakes for hair, uh, who were really not uh, nice to know at all. The problem with this woman was, with uh, Medusa, Anyone who looked at her was immediately killed. I mean, just looking at her, you had it, that was it. This woman's eyes, she was chosen specifically for this role because of her really piercing eyes, blue eyes. And as a matter of interest, I have fairly recently got to know the granddaughter of this very sitter. Very interesting. She was the daughter of a Baltic baron who had moved 
to England sometime uh, before the war and uh, I believe died only quite recently. But as I say, it's not one that I would like to have on my bedroom wall because those eyes, they're looking at you all the time. They are really stunning, not only in, in the coloration uh, of the images, but also in the characterization of them too. Uh, very, very interesting juxtapositions in some cases. Uh, I mean, a lot of the people uh, had various, uh, a lot of them obviously were, were high society. Well, they were all high society. Some of them were, were peerage. Uh, some of them had more uh, political connections. Uh, but uh, the juxtapositions, I mean, you have people like, for example, uh, Circe. Now, she was uh, the lady portraying Circe, the, the temptress, a magician. Um, she was the da daughter of Field Marshal Earl Haig. You then have another one uh, who later married Sir Oswald Mosley. Uh, and there again, you have a totally different uh, political connection. So it's all these sort of cross currents, even within the, the assembled casts, which make the whole thing, really, there's a certain uh, piquant uh, sense to the whole thing. It's done partly with tongue-in-cheek as well.